poverty is a state of privation, or a lack of the usual or socially acceptable amount of money or material possessions. The most common measure of poverty in the U.S. is the poverty threshold set by the U.S. government. This measure recognizes poverty as a lack of those goods and services commonly taken for granted by members of mainstream society. The official threshold is adjusted for inflation using the Consumer Price Index. The government's definition of poverty is based on total income received. For example, the poverty level for 2014 was set at $23,850 for a family of four. Most Americans will spend at least one year below the poverty line at some point between ages 25 and 75. Poverty rates are persistently higher in rural and inner city parts of the country as compared to suburban areas. In November 2012 the U.S. Census Bureau said more than 16% of the population lived in poverty, including almost 20% of American children, up from 14.3% in 2009 and to its highest level since 1993. In 2008, 13.2% Americans lived in poverty. Starting in the 1980s, relative poverty rates have consistently exceeded those of other wealthy nations. California has a poverty rate of 23.5%, the highest of any state in the country. In 2009 the number of people who were in poverty was approaching 1960s levels that led to the National War on Poverty. In 2011 extreme poverty in the United States, meaning households living on less than $2 per day before government benefits, was double 1996 levels at 1.5 million households, including 2.8 million children. This would be roughly 1.2% of the U.S. population in 2011, presuming a mean household size of 2.55 people. Census data for 2011 showed that half the population qualified as low income. In 2011, child poverty reached record high levels, with 16.7 million children living in food insecure households, about 35% more than 2007 levels. A 2013 UNICEF report ranked the U.S. as having the second highest relative child poverty rates in the developed world. There were about 643,000 sheltered and unsheltered homeless people nationwide in January 2009. Almost two-thirds stayed in an emergency shelter or transitional housing program and the other third were living on the street, in an abandoned building, or another place not meant for human habitation. About 1.56 million people, or about 0.5% of the U.S. population, used an emergency shelter or a transitional housing program between October 1, 2008 and September 30, 2009. Around 44% of homeless people are employed. Measures of Poverty Two official measures of poverty. There are two basic versions of the federal poverty measure, the poverty thresholds and the poverty guidelines. The Census Bureau issues the poverty thresholds, which are generally used for statistical purposes a euro for example, to estimate the number of people in poverty nationwide each year and classify them by type of residence, race, and other social, economic, and demographic characteristics. The Department of Health and Human Services issues to poverty guidelines for administrative purposes a euro for instance, to determine whether a person or family is eligible for assistance through various federal programs. Since the 1960s, the United States government has defined poverty in absolute terms. When the Johnson administration declared war on poverty in 1964, it chose an absolute measure. The absolute poverty line is the threshold below which families or individuals are considered to be lacking the resources to meet the basic needs for healthy living. Having insufficient income to provide the food, shelter and clothing needed to preserve health. The Orshansky poverty thresholds form the basis for the current measure of poverty in the U.S. Molly Orshansky was an economist working for the Social Security Administration. Her work appeared at an opportune moment. Orshansky's article was published later in the same year that Johnson declared war on poverty. Since her measure was absolute, it made it possible to objectively answer whether the U.S. government was winning this war. The newly formed United States Office of Economic Opportunity adopted the lower of the Orshansky poverty thresholds for statistical, planning, and budgetary purposes in May 1965. 
the Bureau of the Budget adopted Olshansky's definition for statistical use in all executive departments. The measure gave a range of income cutoffs, or thresholds, adjusted for factors such as family size, sex of the family head, number of children under 18 years old, and farm or non farm residents. The economy food plan was at the core of this definition of poverty. At the time of creating the poverty definition, the Department of Agriculture found that families of three or more persons spent about one third of their after tax income on food. For these families, poverty thresholds were set at three times the cost of the economy food plan. Different procedures were used for calculating poverty thresholds for two person households and persons living alone. Annual updates of the SSA poverty thresholds were based on price changes in the economy food plan, but updates do not reflect other changes. Two changes were made to the poverty definition in 1969. Thresholds for non-farm families were tied to annual changes in the consumer price index rather than changes in the cost of the economy food plan. Farm thresholds were raised from 70 to 85 percent of the non-farm levels. In 1981, further changes were made to the poverty definition. Separate thresholds for farm and female householder families were eliminated. The largest family size category became nine persons or more. Apart from these changes, the U.S. government's approach to measuring poverty has remained static for the past 40 years. Recent poverty rate and guidelines The poverty guideline figures are not the figures the Census Bureau uses to calculate the number of poor persons. The figures that the Census Bureau uses are the poverty thresholds. The Census Bureau provides an explanation of the difference between poverty thresholds and guidelines. The Census Bureau uses a set of money income thresholds that vary by family size and composition to determine who is in poverty. The 2010 figure for a family of four with no children under 18 years of age is $22,541, while the figure for a family of four with two children under 18 is $22,162. For comparison, the 2011 HHS Poverty Guideline for a Family of Four is $22,350. Numbers in other countries, comparing poverty levels among countries is difficult, because a variety of factors are at play. The official number of poor in the United States in 2008 is about 39.1 million people, greater in number but not percentage than the officially poor in Indonesia which has a far lower human development index in the next largest population after the United States. While the percentages appear the same, the actual income is not the same among both groups of people living below their nation's poverty levels. Understanding the many aspects, not of using but of comparing poverty definitions, can aid perception. Using the Human Poverty Index, or Human Development Index, may help global comparison in quality of living. Yet even when nations use the same method, some issues can remain. Relative measures of poverty, another way of looking at poverty is in relative terms. Relative poverty can be defined as having significantly less income and wealth than other members of society. Therefore, the relative poverty rate is a measure of income inequality. When the standard of living among those in more financially advantageous positions rises while that of those considered poor stagnates, the relative poverty rate will reflect such growing income inequality and increase. Conversely, the relative poverty rate can decrease, with low-income people coming to have less wealth and income if wealthier people's wealth is reduced by a larger percentage than theirs. In 1959, a family at the poverty line had an income that was 42.64% of the median income. If the poverty line in 1999 was less than 42.64% of the median income, then relative poverty would have increased. Some critics argue that relying on income disparity to determine who is impoverished can be misleading. The Bureau of Labor Statistics data suggests that consumer spending varies much less than income. In 2008, the A Euro OEP arrest a Euro one fifth of Americans' households spent on average $12,955 per person for goods and services, the second quintile spent $14,168, the third $16,255, the fourth $19,695, 
while the A Euro or a richest A Euro fifth spent $26,644. The disparity of expenditures is much less than the disparity of income. Income distribution and relative poverty, although the relative approach theoretically differs largely from the Orshansky definition, crucial variables of both poverty definitions are more similar than often thought. First, the so-called standardization of income in both approaches is very similar. To make incomes comparable among households of different sizes, equivalent scales are used to standardize household income to the level of a single-person household. When compared to the U.S. Census poverty lines, which is based on a defined basket of goods, for the most prevalent household types both standardization methods show to be very similar. Poverty and demographics, in addition to family status, race ethnicity and age also correlate with high poverty rates in the United States. Although data regarding race and poverty are more extensively published and cross-tabulated the family status correlation is by far the strongest. Poverty and Family Status According to the U.S. Census, in 2007 5.8% of all people in married families lived in poverty, as did 26.6% of all persons in single-parent households and 19.1% of all persons living alone. More than 75% of all poor households are headed by women. By Race Ethnicity and Family Status, based on data from 2007. Among married couple families, 5.8% lived in poverty. This number varied by race and ethnicity as follows, 5.4% of all white persons, 9.7% of all black persons, and, 14.9% of all Hispanic persons living in poverty. Among single-parent families, 26.6% lived in poverty. This number varied by race and ethnicity as follows. 22.5% of all white persons, 44.0% of all black persons, and, 33.4% of all Hispanic persons living in poverty. Among individuals living alone, 19.1% lived in poverty. This number varied by race and ethnicity as follows, 18% of white persons, 28.9% of black persons and, 27% of Hispanic persons living in poverty. Poverty and Race Ethnicity, the U.S. Census declared that in 2010 15.1% of the general population lived in poverty, 9.9% of all white persons, 12.1% of all Asian persons, 26.6% of all Hispanic persons, 28.4% of all black persons. About half of those living in poverty are non-Hispanic white, but poverty rates are much higher for blacks and Hispanics. Non-Hispanic white children comprised 57% of all poor rural children. In FY 2009, black families comprised 33.3% of TANF families, non-Hispanic white families comprised 31.2%, and 28.8% were Hispanic. Poverty among Native Americans Poverty is also notoriously high on Native American reservations. Seven of the eleven poorest counties in per capita income, including the two poorest in the U.S., encompass Lakota Sioux reservations in South Dakota. This fact has been cited by some critics as a mechanism that enables the A Euro or kidnapping a Euro of Lakota children by the state of South Dakota's Department of Social Services. The Lakota Fiopli Euro Unregistered Trademark S Law Project, among other critics, Allege that South Dakota Euro OE inappropriately equates economic poverty with neglect. South Dakota's rate of identifying neglect is 18% higher than the national average. In 2010, the national average of state discernment of neglect, as a percent of total maltreatment of foster children prior to their being taken into custody by the state, was 78.3%. In South Dakota, the rate was 95.8% of Euro poverty in the Ridge Reservation in particular has had unprecedented effects on its residents' longevity. A Euro OE recent report state the average life expectancy is 45 years old while others state that it is 48 years old for men and 52 years old for women. With either set of figures, that's the shortest life expectancy for any community in the Western Hemisphere outside Haiti, according to the Wall Street Journal A Euro Poverty and Age.
The U.S. Census declared that in 2010 15.1% of the general population lived in poverty, 22% of all people under age 18, 13.7% of all people 19 a euro 64 and 9% of all people ages 65 and older. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development uses a different measure for poverty and declared in 2008 that child poverty in the U.S. is 20% and poverty among the elderly is 23%. The non-profit advocacy group Feeding America has released a study based on 2005 Euro 2007 data from the U.S. Census Bureau and the Agriculture Department, which claims that 3.5 million children under the age of 5 are at risk of hunger in the United States. The study claims that in 11 states, Louisiana, which has the highest rate, followed by North Carolina, Ohio, Kentucky, Texas, New Mexico, Kansas, South Carolina, Tennessee, Idaho and Arkansas, more than 20% of children under 5 are allegedly at risk of going hungry. The study was paid by Conagra Foods, a large food company. Child poverty, in 2012, 16.1 million children were living in poverty. Out of the 49 million Americans living in food insecure homes, 15.9 million of them were children. In 2013, Child poverty reached record high levels in the U.S., with 16.7 million children living in food insecure households. 47 million Americans depend on food banks, more than 30% above 2007 levels. Households headed by single mothers are most likely to be affected. 30% of low income single mothers can't even afford diapers. Not having the ability to afford this necessity can cause a chain reaction of events to occur including mental, health, and behavioral effects. Some women are forced to make use of one or two diapers, using them more than once. This causes rashes and sanitation problems as well as health problems for the child and the mother. Without diapers, children are unable to enter into daycare. The lack of child care can be detrimental to single mothers by hindering their ability to obtain employment. Worst affected are the District of Columbia, Oregon, Arizona, New Mexico and Florida, while North Dakota, New Hampshire, Virginia, Minnesota and Massachusetts are the least affected. 31 million low-income children received free or reduced price meals daily through the National School Lunch Program during the 2012 federal fiscal year. Nearly 14 million children are estimated to be served by Feeding America with over 3 million being of the ages of 5 and under. Poverty and Education Poverty affects individual access to quality education. The U.S. education system is funded by local communities. Therefore the quality of materials and teachers is reflective of the affluence of community. Low-income communities are not able to afford the quality education that high-income communities are. Another important aspect of education in low-income communities is the apathy of both students and teachers. To some the children of the poor or ignorant are seen as mere copies of their parents fated to live out the same poor or ignorant life. The effect of such a perception can be teachers that will not put forth the effort to teach and students that are opposed to learning. In both cases the idea is that the poor student is incapable. Females in poverty are also likely to become pregnant at a young age, and with fewer resources to care for a child, young women often drop out of school. Due to these and other reasons the quality of education between the classes is not equal. Food security. 89% of the American households were food secure throughout the entire year of 2002, meaning that they had access, at all times, to enough food for an active, healthy life for all of the household members. The remaining households were food insecure at least some time during that year. The prevalence of food insecurity rose from 10.7% in 2001 to 11.1% in 2002, and the prevalence of food insecurity with hunger rose from 3.3% to 3.5%. In 2007, 88.9% of American households were food secure throughout the entire year. The number of American households that were food secure throughout the entire year dropped to 85.4% in 2008. The prevalence of food insecurity has been essentially unchanged since 2008. Factors in poverty There are numerous factors related to poverty in the United States. 
According to the American Enterprise Institute, research has shown that income and intelligence are related. In a 1998 study, Charles Murray compared the earnings of 733 full sibling pairs with differing intelligence quotients. He referred to the sample as utopian in that the sampled pairs were raised in families with virtually no illegitimacy, divorce or poverty. The average earnings of sampled individuals with an IQ of under 75 was $11,000, compared to $16,000 for those with an IQ between 75 and 90, $23,000 for those with an IQ between 90 and 110, $27,000 for those with an IQ between 110 and 125, and $38,000 for those with an IQ above 125. Murray's work on IQ has been found faulty by Stephen Jay Gould and others. Income has a high correlation with educational levels. In 2007, the median earnings of household headed by individuals with less than a ninth grade education was $20,805 while households headed by high school graduates earned $40,456. Households headed holders of Baccalaureate Euro unregistered trademark S degree earn $77,605, and families headed by individuals with professional degrees earned $100,000. In many cases poverty is caused by job loss. In 2007, the poverty rate was 21.5% for individuals who were unemployed, but only 2.5% for individuals who were employed full-time. In 1991, 8.3% of children in two-parent families were likely to live in poverty. 19.6% of children lived with father in single-parent family. And 47.1% in single-parent family headed by mother. Income levels vary with age. For example, the median 2009 income for households headed by individuals age 15 a Euro 24 was only $30,750 but increased to $50,188 for household headed by individuals age 25 a Euro 34 and $61,083 for household headed by individuals 35 a Euro 44. Although the reasons are unclear, work experience and additional education may be factors. Income levels vary along racial ethnic lines, 21% of all children in the United States live in poverty. About 46% of black children and 40% of Latino children live in poverty. The poverty rate is 9.9% for black married couples and only 30% of black children are born to married couples. The poverty rate for native-born and naturalized whites is identical. On the other hand, the poverty rate for naturalized blacks is 11.8% compared to 25.1% for native-born blacks suggesting race alone does not explain income disparity. Not all minorities have low incomes. Asian families have higher incomes than all other ethnic groups. For example, the 2005 median income of Asian families was $68,957 compared to the median income of white families of $59,124. Asians, however, report discrimination occurrences more frequently than blacks. Specifically, 31% of Asians reported employment discrimination compared to 26% of blacks in 2005. The relationship between tax rates and poverty is disputed. A study comparing high-tax Scandinavian countries with the U.S. suggests high tax rates are inversely correlated with poverty rates. The poverty rate, however, is low in some low-tax countries such as Switzerland. A comparison of poverty rates between states reveals that some low-tax states have low poverty rates. For example, New Hampshire has the lowest poverty rate of any state in the U.S., and has very low taxes. It is true however that in those instances, both Switzerland and New Hampshire have a very high household income and other measures to levy or offset the lack of taxation. For example, Switzerland has universal health care and a free system of education for children as young as four years old. New Hampshire has no state income tax or sales tax but does have the nation's highest property taxes. The Heritage Foundation speculates that illegal immigration increases job competition among low-wage earners, both native and foreign-born. Additionally many first-generation immigrants, namely those without a high school diploma, are also living in poverty themselves. 
concerns regarding accuracy. In recent years, there have been a number of concerns raised about the official U.S. poverty measure. In 1995, the National Research Council's Committee on National Statistics convened a panel on measuring poverty. The findings of the panel were that the official poverty measure in the United States is flawed and does not adequately inform policy makers or the public about who is poor and who is not poor. The panel was chaired by Robert Michael, former dean of the Harris School of the University of Chicago. According to Michael, the official U.S. poverty measure has not kept pace with far-reaching changes in society and the economy. The panel proposed a model based on disposable income, understating poverty. Many sociologists and government officials have argued that poverty in the United States is understated, meaning that there are more households living in actual poverty than there are households below the poverty threshold. A recent NPR report states that as much as 30% of Americans have trouble making ends meet and other advocates have made supporting claims that the rate of actual poverty in the U.S. is far higher than that calculated by using the poverty threshold. A study taken in 2012 estimated that roughly 38% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. According to William H. Chafe, if one used a relative standard for measuring poverty then 18% of families was living in poverty in 1968, not 13% as officially estimated at that time. As far back as 1969, the Bureau of Labor Statistics put forth suggested budgets for families to live adequately on. 60% of working-class Americans lived below one of these budgets, which suggested that a far higher proportion of Americans lived in poverty than the official poverty line suggested. These findings were also used by observers on the left when questioning the long-established view that most Americans had attained an affluent standard of living in the two decades following the end of the Second World War. Using a definition of relative poverty, it was estimated that, between 1979 and 1982, 17.1% of Americans lived in poverty. As noted above, the poverty thresholds used by the U.S. government were originally developed during the Johnson administration's War on Poverty initiative in 1963 Euro 1964. Molly Olshansky, the government economist working at the Social Security Administration who developed the thresholds, based the threshold levels on the cost of purchasing what in the mid-1950s had been determined by the U.S. Department of Agriculture to be the minimal nutritionally adequate amount of food necessary to feed a family. Orshansky multiplied the cost of a food basket by a factor of three, under the assumption that the average family spent one-third of its income on food. While the poverty threshold is updated for inflation every year, the basket of food used to determine what constitutes being deprived of a socially acceptable minimum standard of living has not been updated since 1955. As a result, the current poverty line only takes into account food purchases that were common more than 50 years ago, updating their cost using the Consumer Price Index. When methods similar to Orshansky Euro unregistered trademark S were used to update the food basket using prices for the year 2000 instead of from nearly a half century earlier, it was found that the poverty line should actually be 200% higher than the official level being used by the government in that year. Yet even that higher level could still be considered flawed, as it would be based almost entirely on food costs and on the assumption that families still spend a third of their income on food. In fact, Americans typically spent less than one-tenth of their after-tax income on food in 2000. For many families, the costs of housing, health insurance and medical care, transportation, and access to basic telecommunications take a much larger bite out of the familiar Euro unregistered trademark S income today than a half-century ago. Yet, as noted above, none of these costs are considered in determining the official poverty thresholds. According to John Schwartz, a political scientist at the University of Arizona, the issue of understating poverty is especially pressing in states with both a high cost of living and a high poverty rate such as California where the median home price in May 2006 was determined to be $564,430. With half of all homes being priced above the half-million-dollar mark and prices in urban areas such as San Francisco, San Jose or Los Angeles being higher than the state average, it is almost impossible for not just the poor but also lower middle class worker to afford decent housing, and no possibility of home ownership. 
in the Monterey area, where the low pay industry of agriculture is the largest sector in the economy and the majority of the population lacks a college education the median home price was determined to be $723,790, requiring an upper middle class income which only roughly 20% of all households in the county boast. Such fluctuations in local markets are, however, not considered in the federal poverty threshold and thus leave many who live in poverty-like conditions out of the total number of households classified as poor. In 2011, the Census Bureau introduced a new supplementary poverty measure aimed at providing a more accurate picture of the true extent of poverty in the United States. According to this new measure, 16% of Americans lived in poverty in 2011, compared with 15.2% using the official figure. The new measure also estimated that nearly half of all Americans lived in poverty that year, defined as living within 200 percent of the federal poverty line. Duke University Professor of Public Policy and Economics Sandy Darity, JR says, there is no exact way of measuring poverty. The measures are contingent on how we conceive of and define poverty. Efforts to develop more refined measures have been dominated by researchers who intentionally want to provide estimates that reduce the magnitude of poverty. Overstating poverty. Some critics assert that the official U.S. poverty definition is inconsistent with how it is defined by its own citizens and the rest of the world, because the U.S. government considers many citizens statistically impoverished despite their ability to sufficiently meet their basic needs. According to a 2011 paper by poverty expert Robert Rector, of the 43.6 million Americans deemed to be below the poverty level by the U.S. Census Bureau in 2009, the majority had adequate shelter, food, clothing and medical care. In addition, the paper stated that those assessed to be below the poverty line in 2011 have a much higher quality of living than those who were identified by the census 40 years ago as being in poverty. The federal poverty line also excludes income other than cash income, especially welfare benefits. Thus, if food stamps and public housing were successfully raising the standard of living for poverty-stricken individuals, then the poverty line figures would not shift since they do not consider the income equivalents of such entitlements. A 1993 study of low-income single mothers titled Making Ends Meet, by Catherine Eden, a sociologist at the University of Pennsylvania, showed that the mothers spent more than their reported incomes because they could not make ends meet without such expenditures. According to Eden, they made up the difference through contributions from family members, absent boyfriends, off-the-book jobs, and church charity. According to Eden, no one avoided the unnecessary expenditures, such as the occasional trip to the Dairy Queen, or a pair of stylish new sneakers for the son who might otherwise sell drugs to get them, or the cable TV subscription for the kids home alone and you are afraid they will be out on the street if they are not watching TV. However many mothers skip meals or did odd jobs to cover those expenses. According to Eden, for most welfare-reliant mothers food and shelter alone cost almost as much as these mothers received from the government. For more than one-third, food and housing costs exceeded their cash benefits, leaving no extra money for uncovered medical care, clothing, and other household expenses. Fighting poverty. In the age of inequality, such anti-poverty policies are more important than ever, as higher inequality creates both more poverty along with steeper barriers to getting ahead, whether through the lack of early education, nutrition, adequate housing, and a host of other poverty-related conditions that dampen one's chances in life. There have been many governmental and non-governmental efforts to reduce poverty and its effects. These range in scope from neighborhood efforts to campaigns with a national focus. They target specific groups affected by poverty such as children, people who are autistic, immigrants, or people who are homeless. Efforts to alleviate poverty use a disparate set of methods, such as advocacy, education, social work, legislation, direct service or charity, and community organizing. Recent debates have centered on the need for policies that focus on both income poverty and asset poverty. Advocates for the approach argue that traditional governmental poverty policies focus solely on supplementing the income of the poor through programs such as aid to families with dependent children and food stamps. 
According to the CFED 2012 Assets and Opportunity Scorecard, 27% of households a euro nearly double the percentage that are income poor a euro are living in a euro OE sit poverty a euro these families do not have the savings or other assets to cover basic expenses for three months if a layoff or other emergency leads to loss of income. Since 2009, the number of asset poor families has increased by 21% from about 1 in 5 families to 1 in 4 families. In order to provide assistance to such asset poor families, Congress appropriated $24 million to administer the Assets for Independence program under the supervision of the U.S. Department for Health and Human Services. The program enables community based nonprofits and government agencies to implement individual development account or IDA programs, which are an asset based development initiative. Every dollar accumulated in IDA savings is matched by federal and non-federal funds to enable households to add to their assets portfolio by buying their first home, acquiring a post-secondary education and starting or expanding a small business. Additionally, the earned income tax credit is a credit for people who earn low to moderate incomes. This credit allows them to get money from the government if their total tax outlay is less than the total credit earned meaning it is not just a reduction in total tax paid but can also bring new income to the household. The Earned Income Tax Credit is viewed as the largest poverty reduction program in the United States. There is an ongoing debate in the U.S. about what is the most effective way to fight poverty, is it through the tax code with the EITC or through the minimum wage laws? Government safety net programs put in place since the War on Poverty have helped reduce the poverty rate from 26% in 1967 to 16% in 2012 using a Supplemental Poverty Model SPM, created by Columbia University, while the official U.S. poverty rate has not changed, as the economy by itself has done little to reduce poverty. According to a 2013 Columbia University study which created the method of measuring poverty, Without such programs, the poverty rate would be 29% today. While the American welfare state effectively reduces poverty among the elderly, it provides relatively little assistance to the working age poor. The U.S. is the weakest social safety net of all developed nations. See also Other International References Further reading, Abramsky, Sasha The American Way of Poverty how the Other Half Still Lives. Nation Books. ISBN A 1568587260. A. Cordill, Harry. Night Comes to the Cumberlands. Little, Brown and Company. ISBN A 0 316 13212 8. Aaron Reich, Barbara. Nickel and Dimed, On Getting By in America. Metropolitan Books. ISBN 0-8050-8838-5, Harrington, Michael. The Other America. Macmillan. ISBN A 0-684-82678-X, Hedges, Chris and Sacco, Joe. Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt. Nation Books. ISBN 1568586434, How, Louise Cap, Ed the White Majority, Between Poverty and Affluence, in Series, Vintage Book, S. New York, New York, Random House. Xeri, 303p. SBN 394-71666-3, Sign Off, Susan. Yoon, Hong Seek. Central Appalachia Euro Still the Other America. Journal of Poverty 7, 123 Euro 139 DOI, 10.1300 per Joule 134 V07N0106A, -oh -oh Shipler, David K. 2004. The Working Poor are Invisible in America, not pff. External links, U.S. Census Bureau Poverty Definition, U.S. Census Bureau Poverty in the United States. Why Poverty Doesn't Rate, American Enterprise Institute, Social Solutions to Poverty, America's Struggle to Build a Just Society. Scott Myers Lipton. Child Poverty and Tax, A Simple Graph of Child Disposable Income Disparity in OECD Countries Against Tax Burdens.
FHC Ministries Charity is not reform. From Poverty to Prosperity, a National Strategy to Cut Poverty in Half, the Center for American Progress, April 2007. Explanation of Poverty Definition by Economist Ellen Frank and Dollars and Cents Magazine, January-February 2006, Deciding Who's Poor by Economist Barbara Bergman in Dollars and Cents Magazine, March-April 2000, 37 million poor hidden in the land of plenty, David Walls, Models of Poverty and Plan Change, U.S. Government Does Relatively Little to Lessen Child Poverty Rates, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Poverty Guidelines, Research, and Measurement, Cities Tolerate Homeless Camps by Jennifer Levitz, The Wall Street Journal, August 11, 2009, The Forgotten Americans PBS Series by Hector Collin about Colonias. Americans Living in Third World Conditions This article discusses the living conditions of people inhabiting colonias. Steve Switz, The Worst of Times, Children in Extreme Poverty in the South and Nation, Southern Spaces, June 29, 2010. 80% of U.S. adults face near poverty, unemployment, surveyor Euro Huffington Post, July 28, 2013, The American Way of Poverty, as Inequality Hits Record High, Sasha Abramsky on the Forgotten Poor. Democracy Now! September 12, 2013. America Euro Unregistered Trademark S Shameful Poverty Stats, Sasha Abramsky. The Nation, September 18, 2013. How Much Money to End Poverty in America? Truth Dig. September 26, 2013. Poverty in the United States, 2012 Congressional Research Service, Here's the Painful Truth About What It Means to Be Working Poor in America. The Huffington Post, May 19, 2014.